So when I was growing up, I had one particular favoured place. I grew up on a farm, so uh, it was uh, a great upbringing. And uh, one of my favourite places, full of wonder and adventure, was a place called Outside. Um, it's a kind of an unfamiliar idea to many young people today who go on their adventures via a screen. Um, but we used to actually go outside, so you, you leave the building and you go outside. It's, it can be scary, it can be a bit intimidating out there, but it's a wonderful place. And one of my favorite things to do out there when uh, I was a child was, uh, well, I won't say my favorite thing, it was, a, it was, a, it was always very joyful, it just never lasted very long, but uh, flying a kite, I'm not sure if you've ever done it, right? You know, you've got the wind coming to your back and you just get your kite out and you fly your kite away. And of course the goal, maybe it's just a, a lad thing, I don't know, you always want to get a, the kite as far away as possible, so you use as much of the string as possible, you know what I mean? So you're just unwinding, 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 and the kite's going far further and further and further and higher and higher and higher. Then invariably, as a four-year-old, you'd lose control or to get carried away by it, or <laughs> to end up in a tree or landing on an electric fence or in the neighbours or wherever it was. Uh, so it never, never lasted very long, but it was always great fun. And it's amazing how this big kite, or at least it felt big when I was small, um, could be held onto by such a tiny little cord. Even when it was stretched out, it would still fly, and you could still control this. And this little string was holding onto it. In our reading today, the Lord, through the, the author to the letter to the Hebrews, uh, uses this, this lovely expression. Here, we have an anchor for our soul. An anchor for our soul as sure as it is firm, an anchor for our soul. There is no doubt that, that today is a very star stormy time, not just, not just for the church, it's definitely stormy within the church, uh, but it's all, even socially, there's a, it, it's very strong. It's, it's, it's a very strange time. I was just reading an article there yesterday about the economic effects of, of COVID, which people aren't really talking about a whole pile, but because there's so little business being done, uh, so little tourism, like countries that relied on tourism were devastated, right? Even along the west coast of Ireland here, sure, I mean, like B&Bs have been empty. Um, so tourism is negligible. Oil prices, even countries now that have relied on oil, which is normally a fairly stable income, even that has plummeted. Uh, the expenditure of most governments has increased greatly uh, because they have to spend more on healthcare, or COVID payments, or the equivalent thereof. Uh, and then less, but less work has been done. So less, less is being brought in, more has been spent. Uh, so the economic repercussions of all of this uh, over the next couple of years will be quite serious. And the effect that they're talking about current countries going bankrupt, right? Uh, just, uh, I saw a, little, a graph, a chart, like in, I mean, the States is, is, in, is, in, uh, is in serious trouble. Uh, Japan as well. Ireland is not great, but not the worst. But it's just, just like, just this, this, this whole, even economically, this, this, what we thought was secure <laughs> really isn't, really isn't. So I think now more than ever, we need an anchor. We need something to grab onto. When you're flying a kite, you are the anchor. There's a person at the bottom of the kite, right? So there's a, there's someone who's a such, deciding the moves, someone who's trying to keep you away from the electric pylons and the trees, and there's someone in control, and that person is, is, is grounded, rooted, and hopefully has the intelligence to, to guide the kite carefully. In our lives, we're, we're the kite, we're the kite, we're, we're, we're flying, we're the ones getting kind of carried away, and our hope, our prayer, and as faithful people, our reality should be that what we're rooted to is the Lord, is Jesus. And even, you know, there's so many discussions these days, you know, whether people agree or disagree with the Vatican or pro-mask, anti-mask, or pro-vaccine, anti-vaccine. And this is, again, there's just so much, so much confusion out there and so much, I dare say, even anger at times and division. Um, I can't help but think we, we, just, we have to get back to basics here. Go back to basics and back to being just being rooted in the Lord, being rooted in Jesus. And like, how would the saints react? How would Mother Teresa react in these circumstances? How would St. Francis de Sales react? 
How would John, what would John Paul II do? You know, uh, get these people who, who were firmly rooted in the Lord, how would they behave? What would they do? Because it's, 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 it's never enough for us just to be right. And this is something that we, we can't be, uh, uh, we can't hear often enough. It is not enough for us to be right. We must be right and tactful. It's not enough to be right. You can be right and absolutely antagonize everyone around you. But you're, you're right. in theory, like in, in principle, you're right. But if you put it across in the wrong way, you can actually turn everyone against you. Or you can be right and tactful and make people actually want to stand by you. So we must be, because we're, we're with the Lord, we, we know we have the truth, but we must be tactful about it or no one will stand with us. The Lord is our anchor. And another aspect of this reading, which I, I quite like, is that they speak about the anchor being the promise. Now, they don't, uh, there are a lot of promises in, in the New Testament, also in the Old. Here, they talk about the promise made to Abraham. Now, we know that that would be, that uh, his ascendants would number as the stars in the sky and the grains of sand on the seashore, so that he'd be you know, a great, he'd have uh, a great size of a family, if you will. But obviously we know that the Lord's promise to us is, is more than that, that we'll just be part of a big family. I mean, part of a big family. Any of you who come from a big family, it's not all roses. I mean, okay, so you, you have a big family. Now, the Lord, though, has made so many promises that there are quite a few in the New Testament. But one that, one that really struck me today, just when I was reading through this reading, is that one from John. I've gone to prepare a place for you. Then I'll come back to take you with me. That where I am, you may be too. One of the promises of the Lord is that he wants to bring us to heaven. One of the promises of Jesus is that he wants us to be with him for all eternity. And he has prepared a place. And the preparation of that place was the cross. That's how he prepared the place. That's how he, he opened the gates of heaven to us. It was by, by dying for us. But this is a promise. Like this is a divine promise. So we can be anchored and rooted and sure of that because it is a divine promise. So I can live my, my life trying to discern and make the, the best decisions that I can based on what I know, based on what I feel the Lord is, is saying to me and what he's guiding me to do, to say, to not do, to not say. But in all of this, I stay rooted to the person holding that, that kite string, which is Jesus. I stay rooted in him. It's, it's not my job to start telling Jesus what he can and can't do. We stay rooted in him. And then, then we can be confident. Then we can be at peace. And so in these stormy days, we ask the good Lord to hold on tight to us. And as we get blown left and right by the various winds of change, that we might always remember that our anchor is him. And as long as we remain rooted in him, attached to him, we have nothing to fear. Amen.